Question 438. Why does the Catholic Church have her own social teaching? Because all men, as children of God, possess a unique dignity. The Church, with her social teaching, is committed to defending and promoting this human dignity for all men in the social sphere. She is not trying to preempt the legitimate freedom of politics or of the economy. When human dignity is violated in politics or economic practices, however, the church must intervene. The joy and hope, the grief and anguish of the men of our time, especially of those who are poor or afflicted in any way, are the joy and hope, the grief and anguish of the followers of Christ as well. Second Vatican Council, Gaudium et Spes. In her social teaching, the Church makes this statement specific. And she asks, How can we take responsibility for the well-being and the just treatment of all even of non-Christians? What is a just organization of human society, of political, economic, and social institutions supposed to look like? In her commitment to justice, the Church is guided by a love that emulates Christ's love for mankind. Pope Benedict XVI, in the encyclical Caritas in Veritate, wrote, Charity is at the heart of the Church's social doctrine. Question 439. How did the Church's social teaching develop? Catholic social teaching was a response to the economic problems of the 19th century. Whereas industrialization had led to an increase in prosperity, the ones who profited from it were primarily factory owners. While many people sank into poverty as laborers with practically no rights. From this experience, communism drew the conclusion that there was an irreconcilable opposition between labor and capital. Which must be decided by class war. The church, in contrast, advocated a just balance between the interests of the laborers and those of the factory owners. The church recommended that everyone, instead of a few, should benefit from the prosperity recently made possible by industrialization and competition. In the 19th century, there was a shift in many countries from a society reliant on agriculture to a society reliant on industry, meaning work that requires machines. It greatly helped with the quality of life since it was more stable, but there were also many problems with the transition. Since it was so different from an agricultural society. Part of it was people who worked in factories or different types of businesses were not guaranteed a good wage or safe conditions. and many suffered and died as a result. That did lead to a few countries feeling communism was a better way to govern, 
which was not good because it requires a class war. And it was very bloody in countries that adopted this worldview. The church, however, disagreed and advocated for a just balance between the laborers and the factory owners. She, the church, therefore, supported the development of labor unions and advocated protecting laborers from exploitation through legislation and government assurances and insuring them and their families against sickness and emergencies. Question 440. Are Christians obligated to become involved in politics and society? It is a special duty of the Christian lay people to become involved in politics, society, and commerce in the spirit of the gospel. In charity, truth, and justice. Catholic social teaching offers them clear guidance in this endeavor. Partisan political activity, such as running for political office, is incompatible with the ministry of bishops, priests, and religious, who must be of service of the gospel to everyone. Pope John Paul II said in his encyclical Solicitudo Re Socialis, It is appropriate to emphasize the preeminent role that belongs to the laity, both men and women. It is their task to animate temporal realities with Christian commitment, by which they show that they are witnesses and agents of peace and justice. Hi, I'm Katie Locus. This is my sign name. I'm from the Archdiocese of Kansas City in Kansas. Thank you so much for watching our video this week. Hope to see you again next week. Bye!